so much. Just to remind uh, those of you tuning in that uh, this is the Pan-African Debate on Afrique Media Television, where we talk constructively analyzing uh, the happenings across Africa and also looking at Africa's relation with the rest of the world and how this uh, can uh, be used positively to foster change or positive change across the continent Africa. Uh, Yulia Burke just uh, joined us. Uh, she's a political analyst. Hello to you, Yulia, and welcome. And of course, we were analyzing uh, recent uh, developments across uh, Africa and, uh, of course, in the areas of uh, coup d'etats. Uh, uh, given what has been said already, I will actually uh, direct uh, this uh, question to you. Uh, we are looking at, because some people actually uh, of the viewpoint that military uh, takeovers are not actually good because uh, the, they have uh, uh, effects which are not very healthy for a country. So now, looking at all that is happening, the revolution across Africa, what are those uh, preventive measures that can be uh, maybe taken domestically and internationally? to address the root causes of uh, coups across Africa? Um, well, and there are several points to make here, I think. Uh, number one, we're definitely uh, in the uh, global transformation. So it means that uh, the system that uh, still exists right now will not be functional in just a few years. And it's quite clear to everyone because the system has come to that critical point when uh, it, it has become way too corrupt. And it's uh, too obvious that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the things happening in uh, geopolitics and economics are just absurd, right? So we're now living in this, uh, not just the, um, what used to be called several years ago the post-truth uh, you know societies and order uh, but now it's more like an absurd theater when it seems that uh, you know the global uh, uh, rules and regulations and the way um, the geopolitics are functioning is just a parody uh, on itself right mm -hmm. yeah. so that's number one and we need to just admit uh, the fact that the global transformation is happening and due to this fact, there will be a lot of changes at the um, international level, at the local level, and pretty much everywhere, right? So at the moment, the old system is dying off, and uh, the new system is not there yet. It's just starting to take shape, and it's not even clear what it would be looking like. So there are two options of how this could happen. This could happen in a slow evolutionary way, which would be smooth and humane and slowly but surely societies, countries would be moving towards uh, a new set of regulations, a new understanding of not just coexistence, but of a functional um, regional or international system. And option number two is to shake things up and make it happen in quite a fast way. Yet so that would be violent, so that would imply uh, a certain uh, period of chaos, so that would imply that no immediate improvements would be made, and moreover, first thing, things would get much worse, and then once uh, once this, once this uh, tower, let's say, is ruined, um, using the uh, the very same foundation, something new would be built. But uh, of course, uh, I, uh, well, in, in in my opinion, at least, uh, the optional scenario is a so-called fast-forwarded evolution, right? That would not require, um, you know, blood being spilled and uh, many. Um, sufferings of you know millions if not billions of people yet it is only possible if uh, you know certain factors and conditions come together so what we're seeing now in Africa after uh, after this new wave of pan-africanism uh, after this new wave of uh, anti neocolonial movement um, uh, have taken place is that um, people that were and different uh, let's say politicians uh, philosophers uh, elite groups they realize that the way it used to function is just not gonna be functional anymore right uh, but at the same time we need to understand that the uh, the existing system including all of the various uh, neo-colonial practices is so very deeply rooted into societies and uh, it has to do with uh, 
uh, with the basic uh, needs of human beings, right? Because the way a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, elites or political leaders are being controlled is through their uh, possessions, financial, re financial uh, resources, through their children, uh, through um, a lot of other things that have to do with human being instincts, right? It's something very strong, something, the strings that could be easily pulled. And uh, it's just, you know, designed to be that way. So unfortunately, I think we will be seeing a lot of uh, this kind of escalations happening. And it's the very same, let's say, war or the very same clash uh, that we see happening in Eastern Europe uh, uh, between Russia and Ukraine, which is just a proxy in, in the, uh, um, you know, uh, let's say, war of uh, Russia and uh, the West, uh, if we can uh, call it so. So uh, it's the very same thing, and uh, it would definitely take uh, time, and unfortunately, it would probably take, uh, um, you know, some lives, or it would take a crisis, you know, to, it would it would take uh, some major crisis to, uh, you know, overcome this and to figure out what a more functional way of interaction would be looking like, because uh, what's, uh, what's seen now Again, I would repeat that uh, it's quite an absurd theater when any person with a common sense understands that it's just not uh, sustainable.